On the line with us is one of the finest investigative reporters working in the United States, uh, Lee Fong, a, a, the investigative reporter with The Intercept. TheIntercept.com is the website. You can tweet him at LHFANG or at The Intercept. And Lee, welcome back to the program. It's been too long since we've had you on. It's been way too long, Tom. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's great to hear your voice, my friend. Um, you wrote a piece that I, it just jo dropped my jaw when I read it. It was, it was published a couple days ago, as I recall, over at TheIntercept.com. The title of it was Sphere of Influence, How American Libertarians Are Remaking Latin American Politics. We've seen the, 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 the kind of libertarian takeover of the Republican Party or infiltration of the Republican Party here in the United States, but Latin America, tell us the story. This is really the first look at a group called the Atlas Network. Um, this organization has been around since the early 80s, but essentially their purpose is to take these success, successful um, economic hard right um, strategies for implementing those types of policies in the United States and the UK and to duplicate that method that we've seen over the last 30 or 40 years here in country after country all over the world. Um, our piece takes a special focus on their efforts in Latin America, but what they've done is essentially taken the model of groups like the Heritage Foundation and the Cato Institute and their kind of um, orbit of, of media outlets and duplicated this process in countries like Brazil and Argentina, but also in, in Eastern Europe and in other parts of the developing world. So it, to the best of my knowledge, there has never been a successful country, county, state, municipality that has operated along libertarian lines. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there have been a, a number of attempts, you know, the, the experiment with Chile that uh, Milton Friedman was behind, the uh, Donald Rumsfeld and L. Paul Bremer in Iraq, uh, you know, literally closing down the entire government, believing that the free market would magically fill that space. Uh, that didn't work out so well. But um, what's, you know, the, the way libertarianism seems to play out in the United States is it just moves us in the direction of oligarchy. What's the end game in Latin America? And, and, and what do you think about my analysis of this? Well, you know, in, in one respect, this is kind of a long running debate that kind of predates all, all these uh, these terms that we use, like, like neoliberalism or economic libertarianism. You know, there's been a, an effort by the, the very wealthy in society to um, grab the gains of, 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 a, of a society and, and keep it for themselves. So, you know, these, these libertarian policies of tax cuts for the rich, mass privatization, attacks on um, uh, uh, voting and, and kind of mass democracy and, and labor unions, um, it, it's nothing new, but what the Atlas Network provides is kind of the um, the institutes that provide credibility for these ideas. You know, these these institutes are kind of designed to look very academic. They provide kind of an ideological and academic veneer to these ideas, so that um, they seem uh, m uh, more popular than they really are, and that that allows. Um, usually conservative politicians in these countries to then point to these third-party institutions and say, you know, if we're going to privatize, you know, the pension system or we're going to privatize prisons and, and the education system as they're trying to do in Brazil now, um, uh, you know, it, it, these aren't ideas that simply benefit the very wealthy. Here, here, here's an independent third-party group that's making the recommendation. You know, and just like in the United States, um, there's kind of dark money financing efforts by the very wealthy and, and, and large industrial conglomerates to prop up these institutes. Um, but for, you know, the general public and for uh, the, the media, um, it's very convenient to see kind of like what looks like a credible third party think tank that's providing uh, these ideas and producing policy papers. All right. Is this uh, these these uh, is it mostly so Central and South American billionaires and, and, and multimillionaires who are financing this or or is it American billionaires and multimillionaires? Yeah, that's a very interesting dynamic. Um, you know, there's been, and, and, and this, my piece kind of touches on, on, on the financing. You know, we don't know the exact financing for every single one of these institutes, but we've, we've figured out that um, despite all their anti-government uh, rhetoric, that uh, the State Department and USAID, the foreign um, aid arm of the U.S. government, has quietly partnered with libertarian uh, billionaires like the Koch brothers 
uh, in the United States to work through Atlas, the Atlas Network to provide financing and startup financing to these uh, Latin American think tanks, which and, and they, they train the leaders of these local institutes to then also, also rely on local um, financing from uh, businesses in, in their home countries. So it's really a mix. It's a mix of Whoa. very kind of politically active foundations in the United States. It's um, the State Department, which is fund, which are which is funding these institutes to kind of shape countries to be more friendly to U.S. interests, and um, local businessmen uh, from you know wherever the, the the institute is based. So you know in Brazil, uh, they're working with a, a lot of the the economic elite in that country. But for the the think tanks in Chile, uh, they 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 mix in financing from from local businesses there. Is is. Uh... Does this have to do, or what does this have to do, I guess, with, uh, you know, the, the overthrow of the president of Brazil recently, the, you know, what's going on in Venezuela, uh, the rise of right-wing governments? I mean, are, are, to what extent is, is this ideology actually fueling uh, regime change or something close to it, as opposed to simply pushing government policies in one direction or the other? Well, you know, it, it's important to kind of um, acknowledge that there's no one dynamic um, driving the, the kind of political shifts that we're seeing in Latin America right now. It's really a mix. And, and this is the kind of argument that the president of the Atlas Network, Alex Chaflin, uh, made to me when I interviewed him. You know, he, he, he can't take responsibility for the drop in commodity prices that has led to a lot of, you know, instability. That he can't take full responsibility uh, for the, the, the political scandals that have kind of swept countries like Brazil. But what he can do is, you know, provide a network of institutes that are all working together, that when these crises do arise, can take advantage of them to push ideas that were once on the margins of society into the mainstream. So, you know, Brazil, um, their, their economy has had a, a downturn because of lower commodity prices. There's been the sprawling corruption scandal that has touched every single major political party, including the conservative parties. But a new Atlas Network-backed um, group of think tanks and institutes um, about 13 of them in Brazil have channeled public outrage only on, on the leftist politicians, only on Dilma Rousseff, and, and basically made the argument that the only way to fix Brazil is to get rid of socialist policies and to ignore you know, the corruption scandals that, that have affected the conservative parties and to, only get to, to encourage people to only get angry at um, politicians connected to the Workers' Party in Brazil. So they've really kind of skillfully um, exploited this crisis uh, for their own um, political goals. How is this different from the shock doctrine that Naomi Klein wrote about uh, a number of years ago? Well, there are, there are many kind of interesting connections to that. You know, um, the Atlas Network was founded in 1981. Um, and, uh, you know, what Naomi Klein writes about is how, uh, the, you know, with the military coup and Operation Condor in countries like Chile um, and, and, and the kind of uh, attempt by libertarian economists from the University of Chicago to go down and use these countries in crisis as petri dishes to experiment with these massive um, libertarian policies. Uh, you know, the, the book is brilliant, and I recommend anyone, uh, any of your listeners, to read it. Well, you know, the Atlas Network years later came in to try to, to the, these very same countries, including Chile, uh, working with those same uh, group of University of Chicago economists to set up institutes to continue those reforms, to ensure that the ideas that were experimented with under Pinochet, for example, uh, would be continued to be pushed um, even after uh, Pinochet left. So, you know, Chile has a big presidential election um, this year. Sebastian uh, Peña, the very conservative candidate, has actually leaned on the same set of um, University of Chicago-style libertarian think tanks in Chile to uh, basically set up his cabinet of advisors, and he's are, and his advisors have already said, if uh, uh, Peña wins, um, he will lean on these on these same institutes to to go back to these types of uh, libertarian reforms. Some uh, year or two ago, Jimmy Carter was on this program, and uh, I asked him what he thought about um, Citizens United and and how it's affected democracy in the United States, and he said. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's pretty close. It went viral. It's all easy to find on the Internet. He said, basically, the United States is no longer a democracy. We are now an oligarchy with unlimited political bribery, uh, thanks to the Supreme Court. I would argue that that is the outcome of libertarian policies. 
to what extent should we simply start referring to so-called libertarianism as oligarchy? I mean, is, is it not that? No, I, I think we, should, we need a, a broader debate because I think a lot of people, you know, they take civil libertarian ideas like, you know, um, ending the drug war and, and, and uh, you know, marriage equality, and they equate them with economic libertarian ideas, which are really, I think, from a, an intellectual basis, completely different. Um, the, the, this, this is basically uh, an attempt to rebrand old old style ideas that, are based in feudalism that are, that are are based in a very hierarchical society, and we need a larger discussion about um, the problems we face. And, and unfortunately, I think the term libertarian throws people off because they get they mix up the economic libertarian side with the civil libertarian side. Yeah, and the and the economic libertarian side is really basically a scam, and the civil libertarian is, you know, oh, yeah, we'll throw you a bone, you know, gay people can get married, you know, we don't care, it's not going to hurt the billionaires. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Get over to TheIntercept.com and read this piece, Sphere of Influence by Lee Fong, and uh, you, uh, check it out. This is absolutely brilliant reporting. Lee, thanks so much for being with us today. Tom, thank you for having me. Take care. Always great talking with you. We'll be back.